So here are four things I highly recommend you start using if you're going to be shooting video with your vintage lenses. I got into shooting vintage lenses quite a while ago, and there's been a lot of ups and downs and a lot of learning processes that come along with that. These lenses weren't necessarily meant for video, or were not at all meant for video, I guess is a better way of putting and it. And because they're older, they tend to have some flaws. Now that's not the case with all of them. There are great lenses when it comes to vintage glass, and a lot of them have great perks, but also have things that come along with those perks that make them a little harder to use or more difficult to uh, work around because of how they're built. So there's definitely ways to work around this, and there's accessories that are definitely gonna help you along the way. And here's some very simple ones that I thought I would share with you today. So just to clarify, these are pretty standard features when it comes to video, but because we're talking about vintage lenses, these go a lot further in enhancing your image and kind of working against the flaws that can be had in a lot of these vintage lenses that we tend to use. Number one really isn't so much of an accessory as it is a function of your camera, which is focus peaking. Whenever I'm using a vintage lens, I always have focus peaking on. Why? There's a few reasons. Well, first of all, vintage glass in general tends to be a bit softer than modern lenses, which is part of the draw of using old lenses. For example, I just recently was using a lens and I discovered it wasn't focusing at infinity. Uh, up to about 25 to 30 feet, it was fine. And once you got to infinity, it just wouldn't click all the way into focus. The reason I knew that is because I was able to use my focus peaking. I could see the red highlights, which I had set, go along as I changed my focus. If I had focus peaking off, I might have just assumed that the lens just wasn't that sharp in general. Because I was using that, I was able to determine that there's just something wrong with that lens. Either it's just a bad copy or I need to open it up and clean some things and make some adjustments. As I'm sure you know by now, I use the Fuji system. So the X-T2, X-T4, X-H2S, and they all have the same focus peaking settings. So I can use, I think it's red, blue, or white, and then you can adjust the intensity of that as well. Personally, I find it best to use red in most circumstances. Using white for me tends to kind of distract my exposure. So I tend to use something very contrasty like a red, just so I can be very sure of what is and is not in focus. Of course, that's my personal preference. Obviously, if I'm gonna shoot something that is red or something, I might change that and use a white to contrast that and make it easier to pick up my focus. So that's the first one. Now, obviously, I'm saving kind of the best and most interesting for last, I guess you'd say. Second is gonna be a great adapter. Now this is gonna vary depending upon what your camera system uses. So since I'm on the Fuji system, I tend to adapt everything to Canon EF and then from Canon EF to Fuji. The reason I do that is because of course the Fuji is an APS-C sensor. If you're using a Micro Four Thirds, you would of course need a different adapter. And generally speaking, uh, for the most part, Canon EF is kind of the most universal mount to adapt things to, whether it be cine glass or vintage lenses. You could go with some Nikon or Sony might be another good one, but Canon EF for the longest time is kind of the uh, longest lasting most standard, so it's one of the easiest ones to find an adapter to. Of course now they've switched that mount, but whatever. Point being is that for me it's best to get a high quality Fuji to Canon mount so that I can use the actual focal length of my vintage glass. With a crop sensor, of course, my 50 millimeter shoots like an 85. I don't want that. I want a vintage 50 to shoot like a vintage 50 so I get the full effect of the bouquet and that unique characteristics of that lens. If you're shooting with something that has a Canon EF mount or an RF mount, you just need to make sure you get quality RF adapters. These won't necessarily be speed boosters. They'll be just dummy adapters. Usually they're rather thin metal, uh, but you want to make sure they are sturdy. I've printed adapters and that's great for experimenting with things and also just personal use, but when it comes to professional things or looking at the long term, uh, if it's a setup that I know I'm going to use continuously, obviously I want to invest in a high quality adapter that's going to last and be secure. Buying cheap adapters does give you a risk of getting that lens stuck on the adapter or, or having other issues. I've had that problem, it's not something you want to do. So if you get a high quality adapter to start with, save you some time and money and hassle in the long run. The third one is going to be kind of personal preference, but honestly, it does make a big difference when it comes to these older lenses. And that's going to be using either a matte box or a lens hood with your lens. I have gone through a lot of vintage glass and the common thread with some of the lower end ones or even some of the better ones is they tend to flare and ghost a lot because of the way it's reflected and goes through all those elements. Again, depending upon where the sun is and how it's coming into that glass. Having a matte box or a lens hood dramatically helps direct the light so it comes in through a certain point, which is gonna reduce how it refracts and reflects and 
bounces and whatever through all those different elements that's science and techy stuff that we won't get into but if you can help direct the light into your lens it's going to keep it crisp keep your colors accurate and reduce that weird desaturated ghosting that you might get from that now personally i don't always like to use a matte box uh, they can be bigger and bulky if you're shooting video though obviously you can't really use a lens hood because you're going to need some sort of nd filter in most circumstances. So if keeping the maximum amount of quality in that lens is something that's important to you, definitely you might need to look into a matte box or just a lens hood for photos. Now, like I said, that doesn't apply to all lenses. I have a few really good lenses that are great about how they handle sunlight or light in general, and so they don't have as much ghosting or any of that desaturated uh, issues with light entering the lens. It's just best to have on hand so you don't have to worry about that and you can keep that quality top notch. So last but not least, we're gonna talk about focusing your vintage lenses. Now these two kind of go hand in hand. First would be just a focus ring for your lenses. Now you can get the cheaper ones that kind of adjust accordingly and then you have a big prong sticking out and it catches on your focus gear or whatever you're using to pull focus. Uh, you have to adjust it constantly for your in and out points so that it doesn't have that issue. That is an option. You can get custom made ones, I'm sure. Personally, I am starting to 3D print a lot of mine for lenses that I use regularly. So it's dedicated to each lens. It fits on there perfectly and I don't have to worry about it. And if I want to match the size to all of my lenses, I can do that by simply printing a larger or smaller adapter ring to put on there so that the focus ring itself is the same size across all of those lenses, which is great if that's something you want to do. Not a huge deal, uh, but if it's something that you want to keep consistent and so you have less adjusting to do, uh, you can do it that way. But using it for video, having an easier focus ring on there makes a big difference. It's going to pull your focus smoother uh, and just make your videos look that much better. Now that brings us to our last one, which would be a dedicated follow focus. I have recently been using the Small Rig F60 for a while, and I am a big fan of this one. So on bigger setups, I've used ICANN follow focuses or just bigger setups that require a two rod system. They're heavy duty, they're bulky, they're, they work fine though, they're great, no issues or concerns, uh, but they're kind of a one trick pony. They don't really have a lot of versatility. The F60 has been fantastic for me. It's got a lot of great things that are useful for it. It's modular, you can put it on a dedicated two rail system or you can mount a rail directly to your camera and have a smaller footprint and so that just mounts straight onto there and then also it's got a great palm rest on it which is something that a follow focus has never had it reduces the shake in your video and just makes it smoother to pull focus normally i'm used to having one hand tucked under the camera and the other one on the side to press the shutter but now with this i can kind of have a side by side feel it just feels better and it's just much smoother. You can switch the focusing from each side to the other or reverse it if you want. It's got dampening. So with all these vintage lenses, one lens might pull really fast, another one might be really stiff, probably because it needs to be cleaned and serviced. There's a lot of variety when it comes to vintage lenses. So having that dampening so you can adjust the tension on that and make it easier or more difficult to pull your focus helps you get a consistent guideline across your lenses so you're not constantly going back and forth trying to rematch something that's happened or use something you've done with a previous lens. And honestly, it packs a lot into a very small, compact setup. Like I said, I've used a lot, but this one for my workflow and using a lot of vintage lenses in general and photography lenses sometimes too this has been the best i have come across by far the palm rest is my favorite thing by far but it's followed not far behind by the focus gear of this system the reason being you have two options with this one you can use it as a traditional follow focus with a gear mounted on your lens and then you just match up the teeth on this and you pull your focus but this also has a very unique rubber ring that goes around those teeth if you want to use it as a friction focus. Now that's really cool because like I said, I hate those adjustable follow focus rings that you strap onto your lens and then you have a big chunk just dangling around just waiting to get caught in this and ruin your shot and have to redo it or adjust it again to where your in and out points don't mess with this and then shoot it again so with photo lenses which have a very low resistance and friction this works great uh, it's not something i do often with photo lenses but having this option makes it much easier if and when you need to do that. So this has been great to pull focus on a lot of these older lenses. It does not work for all of them. Reason being is recently I took my Takumar set on a shoot and the Takumar set, if you 
have used them before or have seen them, they have a very unique focus pull. So it's got big ridges in it. And so if you try and match this up to those ridges, it's gonna be really bumpy and jumpy and shaky. So for lenses like that, of course, it's not gonna work. But for the vast majority of my vintage lenses, I have been using this F60 and this silicone ring here that just drops onto those gears to let you pull focus a lot easier. Or I'm printing out the custom focus gears and mounting them onto lenses that I use frequently, like my Takumar set. I've mounted onto about half of them now, and then I just use this setup with that. Having a good follow focus is something I think that kind of just ups your production value or even just ups the quality of your video in general. It may not seem like a big deal, but you can definitely tell when focus has been pulled smoothly and the shot is much better because of that. This is definitely something that you're gonna have to use eventually or do it the old school way and just have it not be as consistent or smooth or just make it much more difficult on yourself. This one in particular I've been using for the past couple months and I really enjoy it. So if something you're interested in, I'll put the link down below. P.S. This was sent to me, but like I said, I've already been using one of these and follow focuses are something that are just a part of my workflow. So those are a few accessories and things that I have found to be very helpful to me in working with a lot of vintage lenses and the nuance and different characteristics and unique quirks that a lot of them have. So hopefully that helps you if you have any questions on that or vintage lenses or just what I'm shooting lately in general, say hi, drop a comment down below, I'll respond. If you wanna see any videos in particular, also let me know and I'll see if I can put that together for you. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.